Today we are ranking the discography of Metallica. And hey, if you like to be kept up to date with the best and brightest metal bands and albums from the underground and above, then stick with me by hitting that subscribe button down below. All right, so the Black Album, actually, uh, the anniversary is today that the video is dropping, and I called in another lifeline, and I'm glad to have him here. It is Mad Mike. You did a pretty lengthy, basically, like, mini documentary on the Black Album and uh, yeah. other aspects of Metallica, too. Highly recommend it. It is very good, very detailed, and also very funny, too. Great pacing. We should probably dive in, though, so that this intro doesn't drag on too long. <laughs> so let's, uh, and we're going to be working backwards here. So we're going to start with Hardwired to Self-Destruct in 2016. So... What are your thoughts on this album? <laughs> uh, my thoughts on this album? Uh, anytime I uh, think about it, the word that uh, pops in my head the most is solid. Like, it's not, uh, it's not a masterpiece, that's for sure. Uh, it's not a horrible piece of garbage either. Um, I listen to it. Anytime I do listen to it, I'm glad I listen to it. And, you know, there's some very memorable songs like for example we got halo on fire which uh isn't uh, as popular of a song as some of the other songs in the album but to me it's just like a really great um evolution of uh their ballad formula uh because uh we remember you know fade to black sanitarium one uh from all those uh, albums in the 80s and this kind of like uh takes another uh it, it takes another twist on that formula and especially in the last two minutes of that song it is just some of the most emotional riffing and uh emotional lead work i've heard in a metallica song in at least 20 years i don't know what you think about this one it finishes off the album spit out the bone uh to me that is just it's a solid song it's got, oh, yeah. some, it's got some great hooks on it. That is one mm -hmm. of my personal favorites for sure. And that was one mm -hmm. of my notes too, is just spit out the bone, cool closer, great hooks, mm -hmm. good time. Oh, yeah. And it, it is kind of like the opener is great and the closer mm -hmm. is great. Like those are definitely like my two favorite moments on the album. Other ones I have mixed feelings about. I do feel like overall the songs are way too long for their own good. Mm -hmm. Like this is rock. This isn't prog. Like it works on Master of Puppets because we're going in this more progressive direction. But here it's like these are kind of just straight up rock and roll songs a lot of times. So mm -hmm. you don't need it to be like six plus minutes. Now that we're dead kind of it takes a minute and a half just to get that one started. And yeah. I don't feel like it's necessarily worth the buildup. Um, I do like mm -hmm. Moth into Flames. That one's mm -hmm. that one's good. Um, great soloing on that one yeah. too. Great, we're great song lyrically too. Yeah, I think my least favorite might be I am Sa or, or Am I Savage. Uh, yeah, that one just like <laughs> it comes on, and I feel my body physically physically like clench, <laughs> like it's like <laughs> I like cringe. It's a full body cringe. From the first like notes that Hetfield sings on that one, I'm just like, ugh, nope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Next song for yeah for Mi Savage, I just <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the only one who uh, does this, but whenever I read the title, I'm like, Am I Savage? <laughs> yes, I am. Like, it's, it's so like, corny. Really? Yeah. Oh my god. Um, uh, one thing I do really do enjoy about the album, uh, and I wanted to comment on this, was the videos. Because uh, they made a video for every single song on the album. Yeah, and the they album. even did that crossover one that was, like, advertising, um, mm -hmm. shit, what's the name of that movie? Uh, Lords, Lords of Chaos. Yeah. <laughs> that with, one confused uh, the fuck out of me when I saw it, too. I was yeah, like, what? Yeah, uh, that was for Man Unkind, and I'm like, well, I did not know Metallica were big... Uh, mayhem fans yeah um, i don't know th then it turns out it was just jonas ackerland like doing uh he apparently filmed uh b-roll <laughs> just for the video <laughs> just for the fuck of it he was doing lords of chaos and the video too for uh murder one i actually really do enjoy as well uh it's like a big tribute to lemmy oh, okay and, uh, it was it was a I nice one nice uh way to say goodbye and this was released Good. like a year after he passed away so yeah gotta appreciate lemmy i actually have him my little uh, Funko Pop from the Ace of Spades cover behind me that oh, people man. can see in frame I, right I, now. <laughs> I have uh, 
flexing my very small uh, record collection, but I have some good old uh, Ace of Spades on vinyl. Hell yeah. I bought a, bought a couple gotta years have ago. It. One of the best songs of all time, I got to say. Mm-hmm. That, that oh, yeah. bass sound especially on there. All right. Well, where would you rank this album on our old tier list here from S to F? S to F, um, in my opinion, because uh, it's it's a very solid album to me, and uh, there's some songs I enjoy. There's some uh, some songs that are filler. I felt like it would have been much better if it was ten songs instead of twelve. Yeah, and they put and cut the run times down too, and put Lords of Summer on it as well because that was not part of the album. And Lords of Summer is a really good song. Um, but yeah. As far as ranking is concerned for me, um, yeah, I, I'd say it's a solid B. A B? A solid okay. B, yeah. I had it around C, but I could live with B for this one, yeah. I think. Oh, yeah. Um, it was on the high end of my C stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's move on to <laughs> Lulu. I don't even know where to begin with this one. So, obviously, this is the the collaboration yeah. with Lou Reed in 2011. What do you have to say about Lulu? <laughs> Well, um, you know, I listened to it once, 10 years ago, and when it first came out, and... God, it's uh, crazy to think that this has been out for a decade. I didn't even think about that till you just said it. That's insane. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's... Oh, my gosh. We're, we're getting old, man. We're getting old. We, we, are, we are that Matt Damon gif where he just ages 60 <laughs> yeah, years. Yeah, that's like, right. Uh, I should just even ancient. overlay that here. Yeah, like there's going to be commenters just saying, wow, you guys are listening to dad rock right now, and we're just going to be, I'm going to be drowning in beer, and then, you know. Oh my God. Um, so yeah, I listened to it 10 years ago, and at the time, I thought it was just utter pretentious trash, no memorable riffing whatsoever, no memorable vocal work at all. Lou Reed's vocals were just cringeworthy. And the lyricism was beyond laughable. But you know what? I listened to it again in preparation for this. And I still think it sucks. <laughs> so <laughs> so what are we talking? Are we talking D? Are we talking F? Like, where where are we putting oh, this thing? Th- this is, uh, is there like a tier below F? Below. Like, <laughs> like, we'll create like, one. Go Like, go F yourself? Like, something like that. <laughs> Literally, like, the first set of lyrics on the album is, I will cut my legs and tits off when I think of Boris Karloff. <laughs> <laughs> and, now that's a way to open an album. And... and and the way it's said too, because Lou Reed uh, speaks in this, in this very, uh, in this kind of uh, spoken word voice, mm-hmm. like, like a really tired old man. And I, I don't want to speak ill of the dead because I know he passed away a couple years after this was made. I'm solely judging it based on <laughs> quality of the quality of the album and the presentation. <laughs> It's awful. And <laughs> of course, we have the infamous I Am the Table. I don't think yeah. we could uh, not mention that. Um, <laughs> and especially the drumming on this album. Like, like I-, I like Lars a lot more than most people do. Um, yeah, I noticed that in your you you're a yeah. bit of a Lars apologist in your video, L- which is little, fine. You gave you gave good bit. valid points for him. Yeah, it's he he's very good at. Uh, playing around what james is doing but on this album he's just it's the late it's the laziest he's ever been <laughs> like like it's like literally the the start of the view is just like <laughs> i wonder if he even wanted to be there yeah it sounds like the band does not really want to be there or they just don't know what to do at all yeah <laughs> so yeah that, that's uh that's a giant f lower than an f uh it's <laughs> Yeah. Lulu. It, oh, yeah. All right. Well, for the sake of this not being like a 12 hour video, let's move on to Death Magnetic yeah. in oh, yeah. 2008. I know when this thing came out, I was in college and my friends could not shut up about like how good it is. And mm-hmm. I like it. Uh, it's of their later albums. I would consider it to be one of the better ones, but I wasn't like as impressed as they were. I'm like, okay, this is still kind of later career 
Metallica. The recording still kind of sounds like shit, too. Like, there's some loudness Oof. wars issues with how they mix this thing. But the mm-hmm. songwriting, though, and performance is pretty solid. I like the title track a lot. Really fun riff on that one. I think the end mm-hmm. of the line has some really great energy to it. Actually got me headbanging. This was when I was re-listening to the later discography. I think this was the one moment after listening to a lot of the other ones where I actually had a physical response <laughs> to some of this <laughs> stuff. But bringing some of those like classic thrash riffs back, nice mm-hmm. hook. Uh, actually oh, yeah. kind of low-key, almost slayer in areas on that track in some oh, yeah. some weird ways. Like, not all the way, but just a l- little bit of influence there. Yeah. Some of the softer stuff, like The Day That Never Comes, uh, is also pretty solid. Mm-hmm. I'd say the first half is better than the second, in my opinion. All Nightmares, or All Nightmares Long and uh, Cyanide kind of suck in places, oh, I think. Really? Um, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of those tracks. Not the, mm-hmm. It's not that the whole track is terrible, but there's certain parts of them that I really don't enjoy. And I also feel like... We don't need the Unforgiven 3. Like, we could have just stopped at the first one, honestly. I don't... They're trying so hard to make this, like, a series, and I just... I'm not into it. I'm just not into it, guys. No more. We don't need more of the Unforgiven. The first one was fine. But, yeah, what are your thoughts on this one? Uh, Well, I'm actually... Uh, directly opposing of the the points you just made. Uh, Cyanide, I understand. Cyanide, yeah, that one's kind of iffy, almost, like like a bizarro stone temple pilots sort of thing. And I'm not really a fan of that one all nightmare long though. I, I actually really, really enjoy probably my, no, uh, probably my favorite song on the album. And, oh, uh, like, uh, interesting. I really enjoy, uh, the main riff and I really enjoy the lyricism, uh, hunt you down without mercy, hunt you <laughs> down all nightmare long. Like it's, uh, it's very. Uh, it's based on the Cthulhu, uh, the Cthulhu mythos, which they've uh, done other songs on. Yes, and, um, and I like the like riff after the solo as well. Um, it's like that. Yeah, There are parts. There are parts that I enjoy, but it just doesn't quite come together for me personally. I don't know. And the the Unforgiven three. I actually like all three Unforgiven songs, and. What I really love about the Unforgiven Three is Kirk's solo. That that uh... yeah, I'll I'll give it to that. Like they're not. Oh, I don't yeah. think they're bad songs. I just mm-hmm. again, I don't feel like I need it. Like I'm just like yeah. I. Understandable. I don't, know. I don't. Maybe like even call it something else. Like maybe I'd even like it more if you did call it something else. Like I've had movies like that too, where it's like you tried so hard to make this like a sequel to something, but if it had just been its own standalone thing, I probably actually would have enjoyed it more mm-hmm. that way. I don't know. Maybe it's something like that. That's understandable. Yeah. It's a uh, actually, and I wanted to elaborate on Kirk's solos, his solo work on this album, this guy was blowing off some steam <laughs> on this one, because as you know, with St. Anger, he basically got his balls chopped off. Yeah, and, we'll get to uh, that. And was, <laughs> was not allowed to do anything. And on this one, it's like he is destroying that wah pedal, making it his bitch. Uh, and as he likes just to do. <laughs> unle- more than usual. And he is just unleashing some really killer solos throughout the album. And uh, I think The Unforgiven 3 is probably his best solo on the album. And uh, the other song I really love is "My Apocalypse," uh, the uh, the closer, mm-hmm. where it's kind of it's kind of like the Damage Inc. Dyer's Eve of the album, and wow, like uh, they they basically proved that they could still play that style of metal, and like it's is it as good as the first four or first five albums? No, no, <laughs> but it's like it's like yeah, okay, we we can still do this. We're we're just trying new things like lately, but like we can still do this sort of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So where so, where, uh, where would you put this thing then? Uh, I would put it because the production is absolute ass. The, yeah. That uh, it's a clipping nightmare. The mm-hmm. Spotify Apple Music versions and the Guitar Hero versions are much better. Yeah, I've uh, heard but that. E- even even the recording is just like it's like. Rick Rubin was deaf when he was like recording it or something like <laughs> yeah. that. And yeah, that that's basically the big downfall of this and what keeps it from uh, being higher. Um, 
I would say I would put it in the B tier. Okay. Solid album, solid music, uh, very good soloing, um, just the production and the way it was recorded and the song length too. Like some songs drag on a little bit too long. Yeah. And that that just kind of weighs it down. So I, I would put it like... Uh, Do you like it more or less than Hardwired? I would say less. Really? So okay. It'd be like I kind of like an, it more in, than Hardwired. Yeah. Overall. It's, Hardwired is like the better sounding album. Yeah. Death Magnetic has is like better songs, stronger I think. musically. Yeah. So it really depends on uh, just personal preference and oh, like... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go to speaking of Saint Anger, <laughs> yeah. 2003. Oh, this boy. is uh, this is a big one too. So, yeah. you you go ahead and start on this one. What do you think about Saint Anger? It, oh, I, I'm bringing up my notes here. This and is another I, I, one. I, production I, sounds like shit. Like we can just oh, throw that out there right from the beginning. It sounds worse than Death Magnetic. Let, let's um, get the joke out of the way. Tonk 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 yeah, tonk. Yeah. That snare. Like oh my god, yeah, it sounds so. <laughs> awful just in every possible way it's like <laughs> if you went in and like told your studio guy to like put all the knobs in the complete opposite places where they should put them that's this album <laughs> oh man oh my god awful and i listened to saint anger and then lulu back to back in preparation for this and to me having to refresh on that was like the music reviewers equivalent of having to do algebra homework in the freaking fifth grade. Like it was just <laughs> tedious, horrible. I'm like, I, I can't wait for this to be over. Like, do I really have to prep for this? I could just like finish this now and just have nothing. Yeah. Do, whatever. And like doing that while you have the flu. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to try to approach this from a different perspective and just not say what everyone else says about it. So, uh, well, try. Keyword, try. <laughs> Keyword. Um, th this at least has an excuse of being made when the band was not in a good headspace. Because um, if you watch that Some Kind of Monster documentary, yeah. oh it's my God. AKA Metal Memes the Movie. The documentary basically. is more entertaining than the album. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it's like they were going through hell at the time. James is going through rehab. Yeah. Poor Lars is having to sell off his paintings. God, poor dude. <laughs> and, you know, of course, Jason, he fucking left the band. It, it, it's the, they were going through so much of the time that obviously, it, and it really shows on the album. Like they just had no sense of direction they were a mess and in a way it kind of it's kind of honest I'll yeah give it credit yeah. for that it reflects so, what they were going through oh, yes and <sighs> i'm i'm really i'm trying to be nice i'm really oh, trying to be nice guys um that's all right you don't you don't need to be nice here and credit where credit is due when they reworked some of the songs and played them live with guitar solos it actually yeah. kind of sounds cool. I can see uh, some of it. Like, in fact, I do remember that when yeah. this dropped, uh, me and my friend, when they dropped this, the lead single, right, mm -hmm. the, the the titular track, my yeah. friend and I actually kind of dug it for a while. We, and for some reason, we described it as like Metallica meets Meshuggah, which it's really not. But I vividly yeah. remember us talking about it like that at the time. But um yeah, that wore off real quick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just say it's... that like it's, it's not. I, Metallica meets Meshuggah actually sounds kind of interesting, but that is <laughs> unfortunately not what this album actually yeah. is. Like there, there's a lot of good ideas on the album. There is a lot of um, rawness to it. It's just, and I understand what they were going for. Like they were trying to approach it as if like a uh, band was meeting in the garage the first time. It was just horribly executed. Yeah. Poorly executed mess. Uh, the lyricism, the lyricism <laughs> on it is just laughable. I mean, oh my god! Especially, I had in my notes, "Invisible Kid" sounds like it was written by like a middle school kid when he's like pissed yeah. off. Like, oh, yeah. oh my lord, that was just like painful to go back mm. to. I'm like, I just, I, I can't believe a full grown person <laughs> yeah. is writing and, this. And all <sighs> within my hands, like. 
the reworked version, the acoustic version that they play live now is so much better. Mostly because they got rid of that infamous part where James just goes, kill, 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 kill. How long, how much longer you want to go? Kill, 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 kill. I got 10 more in me, boy. So, so yeah, that's, um, that's F tier for me. Like, uh, I understand F-tier. what they were going through. I understand what they were going for on the album, just poorly executed. And yeah, better yeah. or worse than Lulu? <sighs> oh, it's like comparing like, I don't know. <laughs> shit to shit. <laughs> What's I will e- say I'd probably rather listen to St. Anger, Gun to My Head. So I kind of want to put that one a little bit higher, but I don't know. Maybe you feel different. Yeah, like it, it's Saint Anger is awful, but at le- it at least has that excuse of them not being in a good place at the time. Lulu does not have that excuse. This was yeah. they were made. That was a conscious choice made, but with sound minds. <laughs> sound minds that, decided that this was a good idea. Oh my gosh! So, yeah, I'd put it above Lulu, but okay. like that's. It's like comparing AIDS to Ebola. You know? so, like... <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, I'm gonna steal that one. All right, let's <laughs> let's move on to Reload in 1997. Oh, okay. Um, I'm just gonna say it right off the bat. Fuel is a banger. Anyone oh, who yeah. disagrees, I will fight you on it. I love Fuel. Like it's it's a dumb song, but it's it's like the like Michael Bay action movie equivalent of music. Like it's just. Yeah. It's just a good time. You can't not sing along with it. I and also like everyone loved imitating that opening line. Like everybody I knew was doing that. Give me fuel, give me fire. Like it's just hilarious to say. Oh, yeah. Well, I actually have it in my notes right here. Fuel is a goddamn banger. Hell yeah. Always has been and always will be. <laughs> always so, will be. Uh, and the memes that have come from it, uh What's uh gimme two, gimme five, give me salad on the side. Uh <laughs> of course there's like the gibberish version of it. It's like gimme foo, gimme fa, gimme daba jaba za and like, <laughs> like, like there was oh, so man. much memeing around that opening line that I didn't know what the real lyric was <laughs> until I actually got the album <laughs> and read Yeah and read it in the uh in the liner notes, but yeah. I mean, I I wish I could say the same about this whole album. Um, I will say The Memory Remains is is a solid song. Um, Mm. An honorable mention here, too, speaking of people like endlessly imitating things. This is not actually on this album. It came out after the album, and it's on the Mission Impossible soundtrack. But uh, I Disappear. Honorable mention, because that... Like, and the... Like, everybody I knew in (laughs) high school... Was singing that song, especially there was a guy on my football team who could do a oh, perfect yeah. Hetfield impression, and we would always be like, "Dude, do the thing, do the thing," and he would oh, do, yeah. hey, 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 hey. <laughs> it was so yeah, good. It's like, uh, what's that? What's that character, Fat Albert? Oh man, it is. Like, uh, it, hey, I, hey, I, how did yeah. I not make that connection? That literally is a Fat <laughs> Albert intro. That's incredible. Oh, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not not a big fan of this album as a whole. It was kind of arduous for me to get through. I, I kind of say if you take the best parts of Load and Reload and put them together, you potentially have a B-tier album. But yeah. what, what additional thoughts do you have on this one? Well, I actually agree with you right there. Uh, if you take like, ha- like, like a third of Reload and half of Load and throw it together... And take out all of the garbage filler tracks. Yeah, and there's so you much. actually have a really solid hard rock album. To I, me. I wouldn't go that far. I think you end yeah. up with a a decent hard rock. <laughs> like yeah. even doing that, it's still not like a great album, but it's it it'll be better than. than it would have been remembered is. a lot more fondly now than it uh, has been. Oh, would you say um, that the memory would remain? <laughs> yes. But um, um, sh- Wait, I'll do it like Lars out of that time. Is, that is I'm my sh- dad joke of the episode. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah it's, it's all good, man. Um, uh, yeah, The Memory Remains, uh, all, I love that song too, especially live. Uh, they played it live when I saw them in 2009 on the Death Magnetic Tour. And the way they get the crowd into it, it's like that that whole singing part. Like, uh, da, 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 da. They, they can actually, that actually lends itself really good live. And, uh, so I've always really liked that song. 
Devil's Dance, I actually do really enjoy. It's probably their... I want to say heaviest, but it's like their... Uh, I don't know. Their most march-worthy song. It's kind of like a For Whom the Bell Tolls, Sad But mm. True style uh, out of this era. Really enjoy that one. And The Unforgiven 2, I actually... It is... I, I really love it. I, I know it's, uh, it's not fine. the most popular song <laughs> of uh, that era, but I enjoy like the lyr- the lyricism from it and uh, like what Hetfield is talking about. Like I could really relate to. Like it's yeah. um, it, it's yeah, it, it's a very solid ballad. Very very great ballad to me. Um, okay. The rest of the album. It, it sounds Ugh. like we're thinking about C tier here, right? The rest of the album is just, yeah, horrible. Like, uh, there's so much filler, so much uh, forgettable songs. I know some people defend Low Man's lyric. To me, it's a poor version of Nothing Else Matters and Mama Said. Fixer is a solid song, but even then, it's not really the best. <laughs> it's not the best song on the album, far from it. Uh, I am thinking... Definitely C tier for me. Okay. Yeah. I agree. And yeah. speaking of which, let's uh, also just continue on to almost same conversation with Load in 1996. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, Ain't My Bitch, even though it's a stupid title, that kiss your ass goodbye part is like <laughs> ex- also extremely entertaining to oh, sing yeah. along to. Mm-hmm. Um, Until It Sleeps is a jam, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I had actually totally forgotten about Hero of the Day because it's been a long time yeah. for some reason that I've heard that song. But I'm like, that's actually this is this is a good one, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then, like we've been saying, lots of filler. Uh, oh, yeah. Lots of boring, just arduous parts to really have to sort of like force yeah. yourself through. I, I I've heard it all before, so I kind of caught myself skipping quite a bit <laughs> as I was doing oh, yeah. my re-listen. I was like, I just can't. I already know how I feel about most of this. Um, any other like standout things you want to say about this one? Um, yeah, I, I agree with uh, "Until It Sleeps." "Ain't My Bitch" is a really good opener for the album. "King Nothing," <laughs> I enjoy. It's it's basically a, another version of "Enter Sandman" structurally, but I do still enjoy it. Um, "Bleeding Me," fantastic song. That riff midway through is just uh, absolute fucking banger. Um, Outlaw Torn is the best Metallica song from this era, from that whole load reload era. It's a long song, but it actually uh, justifies its length. And uh, I don't, f- it's a 10 minute song that feels like five to me. <laughs> and um, I love James's lead work uh, near the end, like that, uh, the do 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 and the way Lars uh, drums around it too is really good. Rest of the album, yeah. No. <laughs> I uh, had this one also at C, just above Reload. Yeah. The uh, rest of the album, you got Cure, Poor Twisted Me, Wasting My Hate, Thorn Within. The butt rock is real there. The butt rock, <laughs> oh, man. is very real. Lots Ronnie, of butt rock. The song sure. Ronnie to me. The main riff sounds like something you'd hear a drunk dude play at a bar on an open mic night to try impressing two soccer moms who aren't even paying attention to him. Like, that's what it sounds like to me. And, <laughs> wow, it, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's half not good, as they say. <laughs> it's half, half of a solid album, yep. half just garbage butt rock filler. So it's, uh, I like it a lot more than most people, but it's still like C tier, high C tier, but yeah. C tier. I wouldn't put it on the same level with Death Magnetic or Hardwired, but yeah, it's yeah. it's got it. It had potential, but it just didn't yeah. quite get there. But let's yeah. uh, let's journey on to the Birthday Boy here, uh, the Black Album, yeah. thirty years old today. Yeah, uh, I, I know nothing about this one. <laughs> yeah, you totally didn't talk about it for yeah. what is it like an hour and a half or whatever? Oh Something my goodness. Like that. <laughs> um, obviously some classics on here. We already mentioned "Sad but True," which that mm-hmm. I love. Just that like, boom! Like it just feels like it vibrates you every oh, time yeah. you listen to it with that that main hook. Enter Sad Man, the original, the Unforgiven, mm-hmm. wherever I may roam. 
uh, tell me with without going on an hour and a half. <laughs> tell me what <laughs> what are your like highlight points about this one? Oh man, uh, I I don't know where to start. So this um. Well, uh, if you watch the video, you know this was the first metal album I ever owned. It got me into metal, so I'll always have that nostalgic attachment to it, basically, because, like, you know, it was kind of like my music awakening, you know, back <laughs> when I was a teenager. So um, I've always had a good connection to it. Which is um, perfect, because that's, like, and you made this argument in your video, but it's, like, it's kind of the perfect gateway album, mm -hmm. because it's, like... Not too heavy to scare off the normies and the yeah. young people, <laughs> yeah. but it's like just scary enough to get you intrigued to like venture on into yeah. heavier, scarier kind of material. So oh, yeah. anyone who complains about this being like a sellout album, like you're completely missing the fucking oh. point because it's like, no, this is probably the album that launched a million metalheads into oh, yeah. much heavier music ultimately yeah if we get into the sellout argument we're gonna be here for like 10 hours oh yeah i'll, I'll <laughs> let you all go i will leave a link for mad mike's video and you can hear all about that in great detail <laughs> uh i'll basically just leave it as no wrong false <laughs> you're full of crap get your gatekeeping ass out of here <laughs> basically um but the album itself First of all, the production is just absolutely fantastic. They are re-releasing -re it and remastering it uh, as part of a box set this year. I don't know why, because it, all, it still <laughs> sounds money. perfect. Because yeah. <laughs> money, let's be honest. Yeah. Well, that, that Which too, is fine. Like... <laughs> it's fine. I don't have a problem yeah. with that. Get that bag. Go yeah. for it. It's earned it. <laughs> oh, yeah. And um, basically, it's... Every riff on it is fantastic. Like, of course, the Enter Sandman riff, classic. You know, guitar stores tell you not to play it now. Um, Wherever I May Roam, great riffing. The Unforgiven, to me, is one of Kirk's best solos. Even, even like, the non-hits on the album, Holier Than Thou. Uh, we got Through the Never of Wolf and Man's a friggin' banger. The God That Failed might be one of the heaviest songs they've ever written. And... My Friend of Misery, I think it should have been an instrumental, but uh, the song itself is still good, but I kind of wish they just let Jason have his own instrumental like they did with Cliff on oh, yeah, Ryan yeah. and Anastasia. Um, you know, he, he might have, you know, second-guessed himself before he fucking left yeah. the band, right? So It might have been interesting. <laughs> yeah. I um, yeah, if I were to... Yeah, because I mentioned my gripes in that video, like the two that I had... With it, and it was basically just song placement in context of the album. I didn't think yeah. Don't Shred On Me really fit on the album because it's like there's a lot of the lyrical themes are just very introspective, and all of a sudden you have America, fuck yeah. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. what that song is. I, I will uh, also just say, just overall, I, I think that this album is like it's it's definitely a tier at least oh yeah um for its legacy and for all of it like it has so many of their classic songs on it mm -hmm. the reason it's not like top top for me is that it's not my favorite one to listen to from front to back like i there are moments on this album where i'm not quite as engaged and mm -hmm. that's definitely one of them but it's oh, yeah. it's not like their start to finish album for me like some of the other ones are. But that is like kind of my only issue with it. And it's, of course, like it's funny to even have like a and, the A and B tier next to each other for this band, because really there should be like a massive mm -hmm. gap <laughs> between oh, yeah. this and and that other stuff, in my opinion. But yeah, anyways. Yeah. But um, yeah, for me, it's uh, listening to it again, like. And again and again and again for the past nine months, I've, uh, you know, it's it's heavy. The production is fantastic. The songs are fantastic. Lars, even though he's a lot more restrained on this album, like he does a really good job of complimenting the riffs. Solos are great. Hetfield evolved big time as a lyricist on this one. And vocal works fantastic. Except for those two song placements and the fact that my friend of Miser my friend of misery should have been an instrumental, I think, yeah, it's it's every bit the genre defining classic people say it is, and 
Yeah, I have to put it in S tier. Wow. Like, low low S. S. Low S, but <laughs> low S. S. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Yeah. I I debate that because to me, like S is like perfection. Yeah. Um, and we've got other albums that we're going to be getting into yeah. here, which is again, like I don't like to also overload S tier. Yeah. And so, but maybe we'll have some dis- disagreements on these on these last few classics mm-hmm. here, though. So, if it's cool, let's move on. Yeah. To and Justice for All in 1988. Um, mm-hmm. I love pretty much this entire album except for the shortest straw not a big fan of that song but you've got blackened you've got the title track you've got one which is probably my favorite metallica song of all time you got harvester of sorrow like it's this is an incredible album Mm -hmm. so what what's your take on this one uh well i'm i'm throwing it in the s tier (laughs) as well Oh, wow. uh, and I put it A because again it has some imperfections, oh, but okay. yeah, not to cut you off though. Yeah, because I, I mentioned a couple flaws in the Black album that I have, and there are some flaws on Justice that I have, but musically, and like, even though there is no bass, the rest of the instruments to me are produ- like are produced very well. Um, I would say Blackened, like that's one of the best songs they've ever written in my opinion, as well it's as just one. A, it's just a headbanger, too. Like, mm-hmm. the whole way, it's oh, yeah. ridiculous. Like, that comes yeah. on the radio, and it's it's literally like that uh, Sean Beam, Lord of the Rings meme. It's like, one does not <laughs> hear Blackened on the radio and hit Change Station. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, no, no, you, never. You listen to that fucker all the way through if it comes on. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, the, yeah the, the biggest flaw, and, like, I don't know what your thoughts are on this, but it's, like... They, they they really cucked Jason on this one. Oh, and, of course, yeah. That's, and, that's uh, almost he, goes without saying at this point. Yeah, he, uh, he didn't deserve that. But no, um, it's it's dumb. Like I yeah. kind of again, I think people should watch your video because you you make a lot of really strong points around sort of the yeah. context of all of that. But it ends up really being the biggest detriment of its sound overall. Yeah. Um. But I do like the way Lars's drums were produced on this one. Like it's clickier, but it's it kind of fits in, in some strange way. Of course, one fantastic song, fantastic oh, video as well. I'll be talking about that in a uh, future video of mine because I'm doing a music video countdown. Spoiler oh, alert! Oh, nice. Uh, be but cool. <laughs> um, Harvester of Sorrow is absolutely one of the heaviest songs your, your canadian definitely came out there too sorrow <laughs> sorrow dang it it's weird because like I, i'm canadian but i'm french canadian so you, you might hear some uh sometimes i, I might uh, talk like this a little bit and you know i might accidentally break, break out the tabernacle and you know, all that fun stuff <laughs> their performance of harvester of sorrow on moss in moscow 91 in front of like a million people is one of the best performances of a song I've ever seen to live is to die. Beautiful tribute to cliff. Beautiful. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, this is uh definitely S tier for me. Um, and of course, Dyer's Eve great oh, yeah. punch in the face. And it's a great way to end that uh, quote unquote thrash Metallica era. Uh, before they move on to the Black Album. Yep. Uh, but yeah, and Justice for All, it's uh, yet another genre-defining classic for me. So Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's go to Master of Puppets in oh, 1986, yeah. uh, the year I was born, actually. <laughs> so oh, me and this, this fantastic album get to share a birth year, and it is nice. definitely one of my favorites uh, progressive masterpiece that honestly belongs up there with like other bands that are actually, you know, like progressive metal bands. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard people laugh when I say the phrase uh, progressive thrash because it's like <laughs> a bigger thing now with yeah. um, more bands doing it. In particular, there have even been a few this year that have like yeah. done a great job kind of like pioneering that genre even further. But I'm like, dude, Master of Puppets, like what the fuck else do you call that album? Um, yeah. Battery 
Master of Puppets, Welcome Home, Disposable Heroes, Leper yeah. Messiah. Like, I could really just name every song on here. It To me, like, this is perfection. Like, this is what mm. S-tier truly means, is there is, like, not really a single flaw to this album, in my opinion. Yeah. This is uh, S plus tier for me. Uh, this is uh, the the one that's above S. I don't know what uh, what that would be, but um, yeah, that's I'm, why I'm I put gonna... some of the other ones in A, honestly, yeah. so that it was more balanced out. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I'm gonna flex again my small record collection. Uh, here is Master of Puppets on vinyl. Bought it a little while, little while ago, and I have never opened it. I don't plan on opening it. It might just, it's just be worth good. money. It's yeah. almost too good to listen to. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like you know that one scene in Spinal Tap where he's like, "Look, look at this guitar." No, don't even look at it. It's it's, like, it's <laughs> yeah. too good. No, it's yeah, too good. Don't even great. don't don't even think about the guitar. You know. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Um. Yeah, my favorite Metallica album as well. Battery's a masterpiece. Master Puppets is a masterpiece. Thing that should not be masterpiece. Sanitarium master, <laughs> like I'm like masterpiece. It's, just, it's all to every single one, every single one of the songs. Every riff is fantastic. Every solo is fantastic. James, as a vocalist, matured so much between here and uh, the first two albums. Like he, he still had the squeaky voice teen thing going on on Kill 'Em All and a little bit on Ride the Lightning, but here it's like it's kind of you know it, not kind of it's gone away. And I just squeaked. Wow, funny. Great how that works. Um, and he is just He's barking. a real boy now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> He's just barking on this record. Yeah. And you can really feel, like, at this point, they were still hungry and pissed off. You can feel how pissed off James is on this album, especially near the oh, end yeah. with Damage Inc. Like, holy um yeah that's such an important know. qualifier to a good thrash metal in my opinion mm -hmm. too is if it feels phoned in at all and the aggression yeah. is not real and not there then i'm mm -hmm. out like there are other yeah. genres where you can be kind of more chill and introspective and still make a really fantastic album but in my opinion like to do great thrash you kind of got to be angry and hungry like you, oh, it's yeah. just uh, it needs to be there <laughs> yeah you can feel Whatever rage they had, you can feel it like um, hook, line, and sinker on this album. Yeah, holy fuck! And <laughs> even on the heavy, like the slower heavy stuff, like Sanitarium and uh, thing that should not be, it is still like you can. Yeah, feel, oh man, like the, there's just this like underlying like he's like gritting his teeth through every lyric, oh, yeah. and it's just like oh, there's so much venom in there. Oh yeah. Well, Venom, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about that, weren't we? Yeah. All right, let's uh, continue on. Speaking of angry and hungry, Ride the yeah. Lightning, 1984. Oh, yeah. This is honestly probably my most listened Metallica album. It's my other yeah. favorite. Obviously, this and Master of Puppets are very different, but if I just want like mm -hmm. a thrash masterpiece without the prog, this is the one I'm going to go for. And and again, I think same issue or same, same case here where basically every song is a single. You've got fight fire <laughs> yeah. with fire, ride the lightning yeah. for whom the bell tolls trapped under ice is great. Even though that one doesn't always get brought up as much creeping death. Uh, these are just like anthemic bangers that are oh, yeah. always going to be crowd pleasers. And oh, ones yeah. that when you hear them on the radio, you're going to be screaming along to every every part of them so definitely it needs oh, yeah. to be s tier depending on the day oh, yeah. decides whether i like ride the lightning or master of puppets more i think objectively yeah. master of puppets is the superior album but i still oh, yeah. absolutely adore this thing yeah and uh I i'm with you on this one um fight fire with fire is the I, I know some slayer fans will contest with me on this one, but fight fire with fire is the most intense thrash song ever created fight fire with fire. <laughs> that riff, <laughs> that riff is unstoppable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, and there's like, he's palm muting between those open chords too. And it's like, yeah. Oy, whoa. So much. Palm here, muting. I love it. And, uh, Ride the Lightning's just like it's their well not their first cause the Four Horsemen was but uh, it's one of those like multi-layered epics that they have 
and the midsection is just fantastic. Um, for whom the bell tolls, it's just I don't know, I don't know what goes without saying. Fade to black. It's one of the most beautiful songs ever created. It's like the free bird of metal, <laughs> like to me. <laughs> yeah, like you got you that's got a good comparison. People go to Metallica concerts. They got their lighters up, and it's like fade to black, fade to black. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's that thing. Um, you know, of course it's a sellout song though. No, 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 we're not <laughs> going sellout. there. Sellouts. I don't want to be here for 10 hours. Sorry. No, uh, no. <laughs> um, creeping death. Holy fuck. One of the greatest metal songs of all time. Um, I like, and this is a trippy thing. How Kirk played the, you know, the mids, like the, uh, the bridge riff, like that die, like the, da, 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 mm-hmm. da, that oh, yeah. one. He came up with that when he was like 15, 16 years old. Oh, that's cool. And I can't believe, like, how trippy must it be to come up with something like in your attic or something, and then all of a sudden, like five years later, you got seventy five thousand people like humming yeah. along to that riff with you. Like, I don't know what that does to his mind, but holy yeah. Fuck. Well, and then <laughs> and then thirty plus years after that, people yeah. are still calling oh, it yeah. like one of the greatest songs of all time. Like, that's mm-hmm. wild. Oh yeah, I can't. And the imagine. call of the call of Cthulhu, their best instrumental. Uh, controversial opinion maybe for some but uh, like to me it's just a it's a classical piece with guitars yeah basically how it works and overall the album it's a great maturation from kill them all a great evolution in songwriting it's every bit to me it's every bit the genre defining masterpiece everyone makes it out to be so like i'll I'll put it in that s plus tier (laughs) with (laughs) master of puppets all right. Well, yeah. speaking of Kill 'Em All, let's yeah. round this out with that in 1983. Oh, yeah. I'd say this is a classic in its own right. I don't like it as much as the ones yeah. we've just been talking about. Now, I was going to say something, but I decided like this will be a perfect teaser to really get people to want to watch your videos. So, for those of you who don't know the story of what this album was supposed to be called. And I'm so glad that they didn't go that way. Cause I think that would have been horrible and embarrassing, especially yeah. like looking back on it, but I'm yeah. not going to say what it was. Cause you, you covered that so well in your video. And I actually did not know that story. I might've heard it before, but I'd forgotten, but yeah. uh, it's, that's a great little, little nugget of trivia yeah. there, but um, yeah. still some, some jams on here, jump in the fire, whiplash, seek and destroy, of course, is like the biggest uh Mm -hmm. single on here and yeah strong but not as strong as those those last four i would say it's their weakest of their 80s albums if that makes any sense but um james you know vocally he's still got that puberty thing going on (laughs) where (laughs) it's like yeah his voice isn't as good on here yeah he's like that uh the uh fry clerk in uh the simpsons the squeaky voice teen like that you know that thing um and you know it comes out a little bit too much uh it you know the flip side of it you could say that you know it's it's showing how raw the album is sort of thing but um yeah and as a lyricist too like it's very um it's very adolescent (laughs) like some of the Mm -hmm. lyrics that you got like you know, uh, more understandably so though here, because yeah. they, they were so young. Whereas oh, yeah. by the time we get to those later albums, they know mm-hmm. better, but they do it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. but yeah, we got, we saw, we still got some great songs on here. Whiplash to me is a thrash metal anthem. Like, uh, I, I like to call that one arena thrash because it's so catchy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, Phantom Lord, fucking great song, way more epic than, uh, people give it credit for um no remorse and this is a uh, one of my favorite metallica songs actually it's a not as well known as like most of their songs but to me it's one of my favorites i love the uh tempo change near the end where he's just like attack <laughs> and the whole song just becomes a complete thrash fest um, Seek and Destroy obviously goes without saying. Metal mm-hmm. Militia goes without saying. Yeah, it's a it's a great Dave Mustaine album. Sorry, no, it's um. I put it at A tier. 
oh, yeah. ultimately. It, it, for me, it's uh, yeah, somewhere between somewhere between the the A and the S tier, like not yeah. not uh, the S plus tier for me. For uh, <laughs> yeah, not ride the lightning and puppets, there. but uh, it's somewhere there. Yeah. Um, and you know, great great debut. <laughs> fucking fantastic debut actually i'm i'm kind of laughing right now too because i'm looking at the way that the tier list is oriented right now it looks like a giant f (laughs) (laughs) which is not intentional but it just looks like a big f right now like like for mine or yours for for the way i have it set up the way you set it right now Oh, okay Um, i will say to people watching for me it's a little bit more like this where i bump and Justice for All and the Black Album down to A. So three in A with Kill 'em All at the end of that one. And then I flip <laughs> Death Magnetic and Hardwired. But other than that, pretty similar. And and like kind of like you said, like once you get to these top five albums, yeah. it's it's really hard to yeah. like really differentiate. But I definitely say Ride the Lightning and Master Puppets need to be top two and deserve to have their own like dedicated yeah tier, which is why i kind of oriented it this way yeah but yeah looks like a giant f so like basically <laughs> we're our tier list is describing lulu <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just it was a culmination they planned this whole thing out from the very beginning clearly yeah oh my god yeah like yeah kill them all Frick. uh you felt the hunger and you could feel listening to that album like they were on their way to great things so yeah love that one absolutely Check out Mad Mike's channel because he is Thank you. amazing and much funnier than I am too. I will yeah. definitely get I, I when I get rich one day, I will hire him as my editor <laughs> and have him do my videos. Aww. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, see you later, see you. folks. <laughs> yes. We'll see you in the trenches.